Hey guys, so here's another little tutorial on how I made these white eye mesh pieces. So these eye mesh pieces are completely done in ZBrush and they should only really take you, you know, five minutes to make. So, so first of all, you need to open up uh, your, your STL file. In this case, it's the Nightwing, Nightwing mask. And from here, you just append a sphere. So this will append a new subtool, which is a sphere. And from there, you just size it up and scale it up and move it into position. I like to scale the sphere a lot larger um, so that you know it fits kind of nicely within the eye socket piece. And from here, all you need to do is just using your move brush, you just need to just uh, mold it to kind of just fit into that eye socket piece. So as you can see here, just with my move brush, I'm just slowly just finessing that, that area so that it fits the eye socket piece uh, nice and flush. So at this stage, you just want to be, you just want to take your time with it and just make sure that this area is nice and flush with that eye socket piece and that it's almost kind of slightly intersecting with the edges of the mask's eye socket. And then at this point, we, using our masking tool, we mask out that eye socket area. And then with that eye socket area masked out, we just create a polygroup from it. And at this point, you want to you want to just mask out the area around the eye socket. So you don't want to be too exact with it. You just kind of want to mask out that general area. And from there, we just create a polygroup, like so. And so polygrouping from mask. So whatever mask area that you whatever area that you just masked out uh, will become a polygroup, as you can see here. And then from here, you just want to uh, delete your subdivisions and then delete hidden. So you've only got uh, you've only got this eye socket piece. And you just want to uh, run a polish by features just to kind of smooth smooth out the edges of that piece. And from here, if you like the shape of it, then you just go in and make a low poly version with your Z remesher. And you want to keep on double checking that everything kind of fits nicely in here and just finesse it a little bit more with the move brush just making sure that the piece sort of intersects with uh, that eye socket area. So you always, when you're making these things, you always want to be constantly rotating around in 3D space just to make sure that things are intersecting right and things are just looking right from all angles. And it's just a matter of just pushing and pulling points so that you get the general shape of that eye socket area. And so from here, because I've kind of edited the model a little bit, I just want to run that as a measure again so that all the polys are kind of uniform and nicely uh, spaced out. So now that we have our low poly using Zeri Mesher, now we need to unwrap the model. So uh, going into your Z plugin, you go to UV Master and just hit unwrap, and that will unwrap the UV so that now we can apply a texture to it. And to apply a texture, we go to your surface and then add noise. And from here, it will bring up this kind of pop-up window and you just want to uh, search for an alpha. So in this particular case, I like the hexagonal kind of look, uh, the, the honeycomb kind of look. So grabbing that honeycomb PNG file, I upload it to this, uh, this noise maker uh, pop-up window. And then from here, you need to just adjust uh, the, the scale of the the alpha because when I import it in, it comes in really large. So just uh, just adjust that uh, scale, alpha scale slider, like so. So you know, you just want to you just want to scale it to something that represents an uh, an eye mesh, and then you click OK, and from here you go to mask by noise, and that will basically create a mask out of the, the texture that we just used. Mm -hmm. 
Now, before we actually apply the, the, the texture as a mask, we need to also subdivide so that it has more geometry. And now that we have more geometry, we can make a mask by noise and the masking will be nice and crisp. Now from here, the masking is a little bit thin. So what you need to do is just go into your masking and grow the mask. So you click uh, the grow mask a few times and then click sharpen to, to get that mask nice and nice and crisp again. And just keep on repeating that step. So grow, grow, grow mask, and then you click sharpen and then you'll get this nice kind of crisp mask out of that. And so from here, I've created a poly group and this is what it looks like at the moment. But what we want is we want the edges. We don't need the, the holes on the, on the very edges of the, of the eye mesh. We want to actually keep that quite solid because that's the area that we can actually uh, apply glue to. So uh, just stepping back, I go in with my mask and I just uh, using the, my mask lasso tool, just lasso out those circles that are on the very edge of the model. So just going in and just uh, masking out those circles because we want, again, we want those, this area to be quite solid uh, so we can apply the glue. All right, so now that we've masked out those border circles, all we need to do now is create a new poly group from the mask. So uh, what this does is basically the same as same kind of idea as before. Whatever is masked out will become its own poly group. So as you can see, those holes have become its own poly group and the mask has become its own poly group. And all you need to do now is just go to delete by hidden. So hide what you don't want and delete. And so turning on the, the mask model, you see how it kind of uh, fits in nicely there. So that's looking good. And now we just need to give it some, some thickness. So to do that, all we need to do is just decimate the model. So it kind of just crunches the um, poly count a little bit. And as you can see here, the, the edges are quite jaggy. So again, all you need to do is just run a polish by features slider just, to, just uh, to smooth out those edges. And now adjusting the tessimation again, just to get a bit more of a, a lower poly model. And as you can see, at the moment, the, mo the model is about 3 million, which is a little bit too much. So just running a tessimate again, and now it's down to about 400,000. So that's a good amount of polys. Um, and as you can see, it hasn't really changed the, um, the look of the mesh very much, even though we've crunched down the poly, uh, the poly count. So at this stage, it's around 200,000, which is perfect. Um, and now all we need to do is run a Z remesh so we can get it low poly again. So what you want to do is you want to put up, you want to um, pull up that count, that uh, target poly count to about 20 because this model is quite complex. So as you can see now, if you don't have enough poly, if you don't have enough up, um, you haven't pulled up the target poly count to a higher number, it starts getting very, um, just uh, it, there's not enough polys for it to create a, a nice looking mesh. So what you need to do um, is just pull up that target poly count to about somewhere about 20. And you also want to um, uh, delete the, 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 the mirrored side, so it's only working on um, just this one little, just this one piece. So you don't need to, it doesn't need to be work on the right and left piece at the moment. So just deleting um, the left side. And now at this point, we, because we've got a, a nice uh, poly count, we can give it some thickness. So as you can see, uh, just using our Z modeler brush with extrude turned on, uh, you just um, give it some, give the, the mesh some depth or some thickness. And from here, all we need to do is just, uh, using our move brush again, just, we want to just mold it a little bit to the shape of the eye. And once you've got a nice shape, all you need to do is you want to duplicate your mask because from this mask, we're creating a Boolean. So what we want to do is we want the mask to actually boolean out our, our eye mesh. 
because we want this eye mesh to slot perfectly within that eye socket area. So if the mask is actually performing a boolean on the eye mesh, then it'll ensure that this eye mesh will sit perfectly in that mask uh, eye socket space. And so with live boolean turned on now, you can actually see the result of what the boolean is doing. Um, so right now the mask subtool is um, performing a boolean on the eye mesh that we've created. And this is basically a preview of what the result will be. And at this stage, you can just um, push and pull points uh, with your eye with your eye mesh subtool, just to ensure that the the mask isn't uh, taking away too much from the eye mesh and it's sitting in the right position. So you want to make sure that you know that mask piece isn't cutting away too much uh, from the eye mesh that we've made. And so as you can see now, just turning on and off the preview of the mask subtool, you can see the difference between a non-Boolean and a Boolean um, effect. So without the Boolean, you'll have a very tough time trying to glue this eye mesh into the mask because it doesn't, it doesn't keep that shape. But because we've actually taken that mask, duplicated it, and then created a Boolean, so it's actually taking away from the eye mesh, it'll fit perfectly in that space. You just got to watch out for uh, undercut areas. See that in that corner there, the corner of the eye, there is a slight undercut. So you want to also be wary of that because sometimes if there's if it's a very deep undercut, it won't actually go in properly. So in this case, we can probably get away with it, but it's just something that you should be wary of. And once you're happy with how the Boolean looks, you may want to make sure that you hit the make Boolean mesh. Now, just as you can see, it slots nicely in there. And once you're happy with that, all you need to do is a mirror and weld. So from here, uh, with your eye mesh, with your eye mesh selected, you just hit mirror and weld and it will mirror your eye mesh to the other side. So you've got a perfectly symmetrical left and right side eye mesh. And so from here, uh, what you can do if your if your poly count's really high, so like something in the millions, then I would like to usually decimate it, something down to maybe one to two hundred polys, two hundred thousand polys, and from there, if you want to export it, you just go to your Z plugin, your three D print hub. Uh, I like to update the size ratio first, and then I set uh, my sizing, and from there I just go to export to STL. Now in here in our Bamboo Studio. Uh, all you need to do is just uh, orient the orient the mask to a uh, sorry orient the eye shape to an angle that makes sense, and then go in and I paint in uh, where the supports should be. And so in this example, you don't want any of the supports being inside the holes because that'll be an absolute nightmare to try to get the supports out. So all you need is just to apply the supports where the base is, and maybe in those areas just there that I'm painting right now. But definitely you don't need the supports where the holes are because one, you don't need you actually don't need them in there, and two, it'll be absolute nightmare to try to get supports out of those holes. So only where you need them. So at this point, once you're happy with all the supports, then you can basically send it to the printer. And this is how they printed. So this is fresh off the printer, um, printed yeah, without without any issues. And as you can see, you can see nicely through them. And so this is just a little clip of me gluing the pieces in. So as you can see, you know, they fit nice and flush and nice and square into the eye socket piece. Um, and just using some super glue, it doesn't have to be any fancy super glue, any old super glue, make sure one that's not so runny and just apply it to those edge, those edge areas. And so the beauty of this is that you don't need to, you know, finesse it or you know try to like push it into the socket these basically fall straight in because because we ran that boolean operation in zbrush they basically slot straight in and where the glue touches the edges they'll always be flush with the the edge of the the eye socket piece on the mask
So as you can see, they just go in perfectly like that. And yeah, that's pretty much it. As you can see, there's no areas that are, there's no gaps between the eye mesh and the mask. And here's the finished piece. So I hope you guys have learned something from this. Uh, I tried to keep it as short and as sweet as I possibly could, but I think uh, I'm naturally very long-winded when I talk and try to teach stuff. So hopefully you guys took something from this. Uh, if you like what you saw, you learned something from this, then please hit that like and subscribe button to my YouTube channel. And if you also want to further support me, then please head over to my Patreon page. Uh, every month I release STLs for just $10 a month and other little bonus features such as you know tutorial videos and uh, full time lapses with commentary. Um, so yeah, just head over there, check out what I have, and um, that's pretty much it, guys. So enjoy, and I'll see you guys in the next one.